What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the 404 Show on this Friday, August 14th. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jeff Bacalar. To my left, Mr. Russ Frushton. Hello, How Jeffrey. are you, sir? Very good, very good. Uh, this is crazy. This is this is rare. This is like uh, mm-hmm. when, when you see a lunar or solar eclipse, yeah. uh-huh. uh-huh. uh, a comet of some and sort. like two yetis high-fiving underneath How about a it? meteor? Never happens <laughs> for the first time ever. Yeah. Steve Sphere Guttenberg yeah. Sure. Yeah. and Russ Oh, Frushton. man. <laughs> On the show together. So, wow. So, so people, we I, I put this out there and everyone's like, oh, man. And those guys, rem- people th- think you Separated remind e- yeah. each other of, okay. of yourselves. Sure. Really? They, yeah. To, to some of our listeners. A doppelganger? Yeah. You guys are almost, Perhaps. it's like looking into the future and the past in a Am weird way. Am I looking way. in the mirror? We are slim no, gentlemen, so I certainly slim, see that. And I, don't, I hate to, we always go back to the Jewish <laughs> thing, but that's definitely part of it. Yes. I feel like this podcast, if you listen too long, you might become circumcised. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but no. uh, Yeah, that'd be painful. Oh, uh, but yeah, so this is great to have you both You don't remember yours, time. right? N- no. Come on. Okay. You don't remember yours. That's no, the point. But I, <laughs> I, I, I somehow have like reverberations or something. Oh, what does my that mean? God. You know, I see a sharp object. I get nervous. <laughs> you see a sharp object and your legs yeah, I, close up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it retracts. <laughs> Oh, some retraction. All right. So, uh, so, so, Russ, let me tell you a little something about Steve. Okay, fill me in. Uh, he is a man of a thousand hats. He, uh, <laughs> he, he has a an, a seemingly endless history of crazy stories. He's met a lot of people. He's seen a lot of shit. Uh, it just the list goes on. He's been on this show, and that's the thing. You guys are pro- obviously you're you're a co-host now, sure. but he's been on the show probably as many times as you have quite a few times quite a few times yeah and every time he's on he's got something new to talk about fantastic miraculously he ran for president one year really yeah was I did. was I not did. elected i was oh. yeah. did, if you recall correctly call your american history uh, correctly yeah okay. but i did make a splash at the democratic convention i'm sure you did i did if i can just so here's the first thing we're going to do today he's going to pitch us an hbo show fantastic okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. before that I want to talk. We don't talk politics too much on the show, and okay. we're not going to get into it. But so, you know, we were talking about Bernie Sanders the other day. Sure. Whatever you like him or you don't like him, it doesn't matter, right? Yes. Uh, so I had mentioned this to someone, and someone who's like 73 or so told me, You're an idiot. They'll never elect a Jewish person. Okay. So for me, it's like, how can you still say something like that in 2015 right. where I'm sure five years ago people were saying the same thing or not five, well, five. obviously that he <laughs> yeah. was already president, but <laughs> we're like t- uh, 10 years ago, people were saying, uh, a black will never president? be a black president. No, no. So right. Don't you think I'm not saying that like a Jew, who, a Jewish is, person. who is a more hated group in America? <laughs> right. okay. yeah, just really the question. Russ, just <laughs> spit it out. So, but, and, and, and maybe that's what this elderly gentleman was trying to tell me, but his conviction and his like, you know, his his matter of factness about the issue was so disturbing to me, not just because of the Jewish thing, which sure. doesn't ever bother me, but just because, like, man, you need to grow the F up and, like, come on. like, Are you talking to America right now? No, this guy. <laughs> this guy. Because this guy was really just saying, speaking well, like, on behalf of okay. America, which is to say America would not help. Right. It's not like right. this guy was like, screw right. that he, Jew guy. Yeah, no, and right. he's a Jewish guy, the guy right. said. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. I, and I don't think he's totally off base. I you, don't think he's off base. I think you, that, you, well, not, <laughs> Wait, never? Well, I, I, I wouldn't say never, never, but I would yeah, say, I would say not it would definitely soon. be a sticking point not in the soon. campaign for a lot of places and people, yeah. surprisingly. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's hard to imagine because we live in New York, but there are parts of large parts of the country that have never met a Jewish person sure. before and have some preconceived notions. I I, I was able to I say match that about, a lot of those notions. <laughs> hey, they said that about Mitt. Yeah, that's true. Mormon, right. Mormon. And, and won't that have a was, Mormon present. And that was part of the campaign. So right. it's definitely part of it. I'm not going to play ignorant and be like, no, every everyone's there's no more prejudice and racism in this country. Of course there is, but, but I just think. I don't know. I don't. For me, it's just like I. I, I don't know. Especially you, you want to like, think we're better than that. And we also, this country does have an obsession with Israel. And I just, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, we've gone down a road. We're not going yeah, down yeah, that yeah. road. I just that we talked about you running for president and got me thinking for a second. It doesn't matter because right that now that was one of the reasons I wasn't didn't, elected. I wasn't even you know in the running. Really. Right. It mm-hmm. wasn't because your campaign budget was like thirty five dollars. Funny. It was a little more. Just actually, just slightly more. Slight My buttons. <laughs> Guttenberg for president. Which those buttons were, and that was 80, 80, 84. 84, which today is thirty five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Sizable <laughs> increase. And, Sizable and somebody at the Democratic convention wanted to trade my button for uh, Angela Davis, who was a 60s radical. She, she huh. was running. Yeah. And said, hey, I'll give you this Angela Davis for president button for that Guttenberg for president. Button. Is that what Democratic conventions were like? Yeah, they were button trading. trading. Thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. We're now, Russ and I are now the executives of HBO. <laughs> okay. Yep. We are the acquisition directors. I'm pretty sure there are no Jewish people in the executives of HBO. <laughs> There's not. <laughs> Jews run Hollywood. Uh, no. <laughs> what do you know? That's just the, the media. Uh, media. Uh, all right. So, there definitely are. So, Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Guttenberg, uh, you know, we, you just won't leave us alone. We've right. decided to meet with you. Okay. Uh, if you could please get this over with I'm and pitch us your story. I'm a little story. nervous. This, this is like a lifelong thing. Dream to be sure. at HBO pitching a story. It is a big honor. And we have set aside a very small a big honor for you. you. That's <laughs> to exactly. me. Right. Yeah. Because you thought it was Steve Guttenberg, the actor. And now you're kind of like, <laughs> fuck. That yeah, one. It's, it's all right. You've already let us down <laughs> with you pretending to be someone you're not. We were expecting Steve Guttenberg. We were expecting Police three Academy. Men and a baby, baby. Academy. <laughs> baby. We got this other guy. We got this legally blind gentleman. I wasn't gentleman. lying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm older than him. I'm the original. You're the first one. Right. Amen. The best one. So we'll give you credit for that. You've got uh, five minutes. Please pitch us this. Martin Scorsese is waiting in the waiting room. <laughs> he can wait. <laughs> So here it is. Okay. A non believer dies. So you're talking like an atheist. An atheist. Okay. Sure. Agnostic. Yeah. Kind of like me. Kind of like dies, you. A lot of people. And wait. guess what? He goes to heaven. Snap. Okay. So he's wrong. And he's like, he's wrong. He's like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, it, it's true. Yeah. All these, all these years I've been hearing about this. I'm going to meet my, my parents, my grandparents. But, and it's true. And yeah. they're like, open that door. Go through that door, and there they are, my parents, who are both dead. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Wow. It's like, wow, this is this is something. Okay. And they start telling me like how to get you know acclimated to being mm -hmm. in heaven, and here's the rules. And here's your the bathrooms bank down the hall <laughs> right, right, right. over here. Here's how money works up and here. Here's how money. I get into that. Oh, all right. Whoa. Heaven bucks. So we spend, <laughs> you know, we we have an eternity, so we're not rushing through this. Sure, take but, your time. But you know, they say, well, do you want to meet your grandparents that you never met? Oh, wow. Okay. And I said, yeah. So we go through another door and there they are. Steve, we've been waiting all these years. And there they are. And we spend a lot of time catching up. Mm -hmm. How with, I was talking about, you know, smartphones and stuff and sure. how I was never really into that. Right. But they were but curious. They heard blew, about it and they wanted to know. You blew their mind. I did. Yeah. But okay. smartphones have not yet made it to heaven. I'm getting to that. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. So then uh, some time passes and then they say, do you want to meet your great, great parents or your great grandparents? Mm -hmm. I said, sure. So this keeps this keeps happening. I keep meeting more and more of my ancestors. Is this all in the pilot? Well, this is why it's a series. Okay. Okay. So, so, so now where are you seeing? And this? by the way, the budget's going to be really low. It's basically white. Okay. The it's whole white. season. Yeah. The whole it's all. Season is white. It's all again okay. seamless. So, so the, great. Let don't me, worry let, about that. Let part. me just hold you there for a second. There's there, lots Steve. of characters, but the. I, Understand. Sets are cheap. I think Russ and I are in agreement. We like where this is you, going. You like this? Okay. A, uh, seems like we can do an infinite amount of seasons. Right. Uh, oh. B, sounds like a low budget yeah. sort of situation. Right. Sure. Uh, so, okay. Wouldn't it be cool if we got Steve Guttenberg, the actor, to play the, the guy? I mean, let's not break the deal well, right me, off the bat here. Let me be clear here. Is this like an autobiographical thing? Like, no, are no, you... no, no, no. This is all made okay. up. Okay, because you keep saying you. <laughs> right. And is I'm thinking, you, are you yeah, picturing I, yourself in this role? Well, and I'm I thinking John Hamm. John Hamm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's okay. Good. Okay. So, all right. Let but me. He's got to grow down. a beard and and maybe make his hair. You know. He can do that. Or yeah. Something. He's okay. He always looks like, uh, you know, Don Draper. Right. Every role he's in, he always looks like Don Draper. He can't escape that. Maybe a pot belly. All right. Mm -hmm. He'll gain a little weight. That's fine. Sure. Okay. You have us. You have us okay. intrigued. Keep going. So this keeps happening. I'm. I'm. Uh, the ex-wives, the children of the ex-wives, their wait, wait. parents, why? their great grandparents. Wait, wait. Why are your ex-wives? Why is this character's ex-wives children dead? Severe accident, you know, big accident. Okay. I went off a bridge, you know. Okay, okay, well, okay. Well, they're just then dead. I meet right. my <laughs> then I meet my 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 ex girlfriends also, who are also dead. dead. Okay, I'm well, the ones beginning that are to dead. be a little suspicious of this character because it seems like everyone close to him I has died. You think I killed them? Oh, that is, is that the cliffhanger? certainly what I'm thinking. Did I just ruin the finale? Mm -hmm. Is that the cliffhanger? I, I like where you're going. <laughs> okay. I, I, you're taking this places. I'm, I'm, I wasn't I'm even so, dreaming. That's good. Of. That's this good. is good. This is we're, why we have building. you in the room together. Right. We're, okay. we're, we're storyboarding practically <laughs> right here. So, you know, so I'm meeting my girlfriends and I'm meeting their parents. Mm -hmm. And then this girl that I screwed in, in you know, in the locker room in, in high school. Okay. Because in God's eyes, just because we weren't formally married, you're we connected. had we had Congress, yeah. okay, so to speak. 
Sure. So it's an, it becomes a bigger and bigger extended family. Okay. And it goes on and on and on. Like, it doesn't stop just with the people that I heard about. It starts to go back hundreds of years, mm-hmm. thousands of years. So the, it's getting to be a bigger and bigger room up there. Huh. Sorry. But you could do that with CGI. Just like <laughs> yeah. Keep a long no, 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 the budget's still mirrors. pretty low. We got yeah. it. But then it's like, why does it only have to be people? What about my pet dog? When I was like ten years old. All right, you're losing peanuts, me. right? Yeah. I'm, so I'm, I get to, I get to see be reunited with my dog. Okay. Right. Okay. And then my dog's puppies. So all dogs do long. go to heaven. They, they go saying. to heaven. Okay. They do. But then why is it just my dog and not every or insect. my pet fish? What? Yeah. What about that mosquito that I slapped? Right. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. all of God's children were all going to the same place, right? Okay. It and gets, it's the dog interacting with like the other dogs that he had sex with. Yeah. Okay. Right. So there's just it's getting oh, big. Thanks sure, for cleaning yeah. that up. Russ. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right. So so where are we getting? And when that, I though? had that uh, that cheeseburger, that cow is uh, suddenly materialized. So okay. so it's everything that you personally everything that I had touched, with. had sex with, or ate by uh, by, uh, uh you know uh, organic creatures. Yeah, organic matter. Well, what about uh, wheat? Wheat is not alive. <laughs> It's, it's I mean, a lot. It's of course, a, it's a lot. A grain, is, but that the, the way, yeah, a plant. A plant okay, is so alive. corn, 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 yeah. corn, 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 whatever. Okay, so there's just like an infinite amount of organic bacteria. Materia. Bacteria. Okay, I, I think sneeze. I see. Sure. Yeah. So where are you going? How with many this? seasons? I, I get I... the impression that this is essentially you just have Earth <laughs> at this point. Yeah. It's like just, there's nothing right. that. Well, wait, wasn't... wait. The kicker is this. We're going to save this for the finale okay. of the first season. No, of the series. Uh, okay. This don't is push gonna your go luck. on for a few years. Please okay. don't push your luck. I'm Twelve in, years down the road. <laughs> I'm not in heaven. I'm in hell. Okay. Because I just have to keep meeting all these people and all these plants. Uh, so it's like you're at a bar mitzvah. And you don't want to deal with any right. of these people. Right. <laughs> right. I have to be uh, nice to them too. So that's about, so that's the finale twist. Is the that twist is I'm in hell. But where? Like when? How would it be? Get me out of here. But how would it be revealed that you're in hell? <laughs> Like all of a sudden, oh, there'd be like a window, and you pull back through the window, and it's not white anymore; it's red. It's re- it's just like you've okay. been on, you've Thank been you. in and hell. It's like a guy with yeah. a pitchfork. I don't know, Steve. You, know you had what? me up until well. Uh, well we me, could we could change it. I'm let me break this down a little bit. So, what exactly is a sixty? Uh, you're picturing this as sixty minute episodes, correct? Yeah, it's sixty minutes. Okay, so so thirteen episodes. So from the first one season. episode. Just walk me through. Essentially, hey, I just met my great great grand cousin. The first episode is more like the build up. It's like sure. me dying. Understood. Okay. The pilot's going to be different, but in terms of like a, a normal episode, okay. I just met my great great grand cousin. No, that's a few episodes. <laughs> For episode six, <laughs> season three, is that episode? Yeah, you meet him. Right. He's like, yeah, I had an interesting life. I was a farmer, and I did some other stuff, and I punched Hitler in the face. Right, right. For 60 minutes, you, they're you just talking. Co- it's like the Gabriel Byrne show. You're getting show. a co-creator credit. Don't worry. Awesome. He's already earned it, yeah. Right. They're talking. 60, 40. And it's just like they're sitting in a chair, and it's right. a white room, and right. it's just like that Gabriel Byrne HBO show where they- where Yeah, yeah, like the treatment. Like the tra- treatment. In treatment, right. 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 I love it. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Can we get my lawyer in here? Get wow. some contracts? So I don't know if I share Russ's overwhelming <laughs> Wait enthusiasm. Are you his boss? We're, we're co-executive producers right. of HBO. All right. I'm going to cut you into. Don't get nervous. No, I'm not worried about getting a, he's, a producer he's a credit. bad cop. Yeah, I'm bad cop. I'm oh. going to put on the bad cop hat okay. here. Right. I, I like where it's going, notes, yeah. But the reveal, that reveal to me, uh-huh. is not powerful enough. It, it does seem a little reminiscent and, of literally every yeah. show ever. <laughs> right. and for me, I think that reveal is going to come off like a 90s reveal where well, it's maybe a, back it's then. It's a Twilight Zone reveal is yeah, what it is. It is. It's a Twilight Zone reveal. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's a cookbook yeah. is what you're doing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> serve man. Yeah, how to serve man. And that was 42 minutes. <laughs> right. And, and you had some guy in a sorry, suit talking that's 22 for a minutes. That was 22 minutes, mm-hmm. sure. but 70 years ago. Right? <laughs> so maybe we backpedal a little bit. I do like the idea of meeting your entire extended family. It's like, how far do you go, though? Do you meet your Forever. Gr- I meet, meet Adam gr- and Eve. Maybe that's the, uh, the the finale. Yeah, maybe. See, I think you should play more with, like, the actual... Adam and um, Eve are Jews. It's regardless of their religious beliefs. Adam, I, I, Stevie. I think you need to explore more about if heaven were real, how would we deal with it 
on a, on a human okay, level. Okay, well, but this well, is sounding to me. Yes. Have you seen the movie Defending Your Life? Right. Yes. I, okay, yes. for the That's record. That's what it sounds like to me. That movie has come up in conversation Love now that movie. for the third time this week. Weird. That exact movie. So what about celebrities in heaven? Are they still celebrities? Do they get to do productions? Do they get to be in Well, here's the situation. A celebrity from 150 years ago or even 100 years ago, I'm not going to recognize. Yeah. But his fan base of other 150-year-olds. So they would presumably hang out together. They'd hang out together. Yeah. It would be sort of- That's pretty wacky. You know, You know what? We're going to have to, we're going to have to let this one marinate (laughs) and we'll get back to you. We're going to, we're going to give it to some of our developers, maybe see if they have a better spin on it. But Russ, don't worry. We're in. I think web series to begin with, and then we'll see web where it goes. Have you, have you talked to our friends over at Netflix? Because maybe <laughs> Amazon, is, uh, they will Amazon. greenlight anything. Because they have yet to say no. Uh, no, that was fun. <laughs> that was that was good stuff. I, before we hit the break, you did start talking about something else that we were going to lead into about how you feel personally about like growing old with celebrities. With celebrities, yeah, yeah, like Bob Dylan and Al Pacino. That we're sort of going through. It's sort of ties in sure Go, going through life together like when you're 20 and you have you know a, a favorite you know movie star or sure. musician or something and the decades are passing and they don't die of an overdose or a motorcycle accident yeah and they just keep going and you keep going you're on this parallel path it's weird and it's weird yeah especially ones that remain active it's like if they were famous you know 30 years ago and then they haven't done anything it's not that's not what i'm talking about I'm talking about people who are still doing good work and you're still interested in them. Right. And you're thinking, because I've actually interviewed somebody who is in that position in my life. Who's Loudon that? Wainwright is a folk singer. Oh, yeah, okay. I know Loudon Wainwright. And I, and I interviewed him a couple of times about this, that we're on this parallel course together. And yeah. his line was, yeah, we're aging like fine wines and cheeses. Yeah, that I think that's funny. a fair analogy. <laughs> that was his For me, it's always like sports people. Okay. Right? So, you know, uh, I like I remember... Uh, you know, when I turned 22, mm. I was like, oh, a lot of the the hockey players now, like when you when you're 22, you're sort of just entering the league, and okay, and now like I'm 33, and you're pretty much almost a veteran, yeah. at mm-hmm. that point, and watching the guys who are you know five years you know in front or behind mm-hmm. of yourself, and right. seeing how like they're not as good as they used to be, it's oh, it's a weird sort of thing because you, sh- cause you share, aging. obviously, you don't share their exact skill and and what they do for a living, but you can sympathize with like. Right. Them you relate slower sure. and less uh, reactive and, and whatnot. It's, it's and a what's weird their thing. future going to be? Where are they going to be in ten years? They're not. I'm not worried about a guy who makes four and a half million dollars. But a year. there are some of those guys that like they retire and if they're not like an all star, but they've just been like hammering it out. I'm sure they've done okay for themselves. But like yeah. suddenly you're just not really skilled to do anything else. Right. Some of them. I mean, a yeah. small percentage go to TV. Yeah. Like that. Very small. Announce right. that's that's a Yeah. Like that, that's the ultimate move. Like if sure. you've spent your career with mm-hmm. mostly one team, mm-hmm. you're that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could probably get a gig with their telecast. Sure. Okay. But you know, right. that's it depends only one on guy. Like, right. right. Of course. Of course. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, but it's, it's just so some guys thing. like sell used cars or become house painters or they like, they, they hawk, you know, insurance or something or like they that. And coaches? they become the face coaches? of, yeah, you know, there's, there's many different branches and many different roads these guys can go down. I also think monetarily, financially, mm-hmm. they're probably, yeah, in they're good probably shape. Okay. but don't you think a lot of them just like, you know, screw up their finances. And even though they made $4 no, million, dollars, they don't really so. They don't have anything to show for it. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe like a new generation of athletes have that issue. And you sort of hear about a lot of guys going bankrupt. Sure. I think that's an age old thing of, of when you're young, you're 22 and you get a contract. How do you, how would you know what to sign? Yeah. Who to trust? Well, when you're 22, you have an agent. Like if you're a professional. Oh, your athlete, agent's going to definitely be out for you. You know, he's going to be protecting you. Right. He's going to uh, more. Uh, he wants more. He does want yes, more money. So yes. he's certainly going to try to sign oh, he's a bigger get deal. get you the money. But then what do you do with that money when right. you're 22? Well, and you say, need a okay, money manager or you need an accountant or something. Yeah. And I they're mean, not going to screw you over. Of has not. anyone watched Ballers happen. on HBO? <laughs> our show, Ballers on HBO. It's Have basically you seen our show. Uh, uh, this is the premise of Ballers. Uh, okay. But yeah, it's a, essentially it's about football players that are both playing and some of them retired. And one guy works at a car dealership, and one guy is like has a lot of money, but not really because he, you know, essentially what you need to, you turn thirty years old, you're retired. Like, mm. that's the rest of your life. You're never making money anywhere near that again, mm-hmm. potentially. Mm-hmm. So is that enough money to live on for the rest of your life? And can you maintain the, like, diamond grill Maserati lifestyle right. that you've right. become accustomed to? Right. 
No, probably not. Absolutely See, not. and that's the thing, though. And football is different because football, the average uh, career is like four, four years. years yeah, or very four years. Yeah, it's really short. unless you're a quarterback, we're and, probably and like very uh, physically damaging. Yeah. and you get brain concussion, and that's, you only have yeah. health insurance from the league for I think it's five years after you which is crazy. retire, which is really which outrageous. Is crazy. Good. But that, but that's a realistic thing because even I mean, yes, if you're making four million dollars for three years, four years, that's a nice. It's chunk not of like change. you get to keep four million. You no. have expenses. Right. You pay tax. Of course, taxes, of sure. course, you know, it's a thing, and and you got to get the right kind of investments, and you got to really understand. And of course, when you're 22, you'll make all those right decisions. Probably not. So yeah, it's an issue for sure for most um, people. Most, but, but we got started with this about aging with your favorite celebrities. Yeah, and, you know that. I mean, yeah, at it, least the musicians can have longer careers. I, I always sure. think, and Steve, let or me let me know stars. how you feel about this. Yeah. Right now, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Right now, I feel like my I'm 31. I'm sort of in kind of the sweet spot, but towards the end of the sweet spot of the like cultural zeitgeist in the mm. sense that like every TV show is making references that I get and it's all about like my youth and growing up. Right. You're in the perfect wheelhouse. Right. I'm right in the wheelhouse. You're pretty right. much exactly who every advertiser is going after right, right. now. Maybe yeah, a little maybe younger, younger than you. a little bit younger, but yeah. that's the point. I'm sort of, sort of towards the tail end of it and I'm like, I go to Reddit every day and a lot of the links on Reddit are like, about shows that I didn't necessarily watch or, you know, maybe they came out late 90s mm -hmm. and there were cartoons that I didn't watch. I, how, what is your take? Like, is that a depressing moment when suddenly it's like yeah, you've, you've it moved is. on? Because I think it's interesting. Like, for a big chunk of your life when you're young, is everybody is older than you. Right? Yeah. Your relatives, celebrities, sure. sports people, they're all a lot older. Mm -hmm. than you, right? And you're catching up and then you're sort of about their age. Mm -hmm. That is a really good time. Which is like us right now. Yeah, that's where yeah. you are, yeah. right? And then, you know, the years and decades go by, and then everyone starts to be younger than you. Right. Mm. It's kind of like me. Everybody in this, everybody who works for CNET is younger than me, <laughs> which is a weird thing. Yeah. I mean, a lot younger than me. Are you our <laughs> oldest employee? Well, certainly in New York. I don't know about San Francisco. Yeah, it's, I but, think that might be true. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. It that's is a bad thing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but no, I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's a weird thing that you, you're, you're, you're used to being a big chunk of your life is that you were younger than the people who were your bosses sure. and stuff. Right. And then, or the president. Yeah. Or that seems you know, like famous people. And then you're sort of in, and that's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. And then you're slightly older than them. And then you're older. And then you're a, a lot older. Yeah. Hmm. And, and as you're going through those stages of your life, it's it becomes weird. And that thing, what you were just saying, like, for me, it was like going to Tower Records and seeing music. I, I knew all these bands. I knew who they were. And it was like, I now I don't know like half of the. Sure. I have no idea who mm. they are. And now I look and it's like I don't know ninety percent of of who they are. That's you know some of that. And you just get this gap that gets yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of that's oh, already happening mm -hmm. with yeah. me for sure. I look on Spotify. I'll like look at the Throwback Thursday playlist on Spotify and recognize. I'll, I'll like not recognize a bunch of them. Yeah, right? which is pretty depressing. And it's, that's throwback. Like that's not even new music. Yeah, I mean that's really for you, and it's, it's just that's, over our heads. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a that's a weird thing. Aging is a but it's like wonderful when you, thing when you get to be older than the president. Right. So Obama is the first president that I'm older than. Mm -hmm. that's what is he? He's weird he's thing. forty. No, he's no, older he's than that. Fifty three. Fifty two. Yeah. All right. That's we have the we have the internet here. Yeah. Let's, good. Yeah, that's I want to say he's fifty three. When you hit that he's point, in, mm -hmm. when you hit that point in your life where you're older than the it's president, weird. that's freaky. Yeah, that that's is bizarre. weird. All right, well, thanks for freaking us out. I guess right. we got to take. Well, a you break. got time. You're you're yeah. in the best point. Well, I I'm guess not freaking so. you out. It's like you're you're no, it's at the epicenter. You're it, we're we're somewhere. We're trying to figure it all out, eat oh. one day at a time. The world is your oyster. Kind of. Maybe if I was twenty one, it would. No. Be. Now I've like would tried you really, to open well, it. Well, I'll do that thing. You would you really rather be twenty one right now? No, I think It'd I'd be rather be like twenty seven for the rest of my life. Yeah, twenty seven is pretty great. Yeah, it sounds that sounds good. Anyway, <laughs> let's take a break. Let's hear a word from our sponsor for this week. More four oh four with Steve Sphere Guttenberg right after this. This episode of the four oh four show is brought to you by Braintree. Braintree is code for online easy payments. If you are a mobile app developer, you might want to check out Braintree because Braintree is the brains. Oh, God. Huh? I see it. Behind payment solutions seen in companies like, get this dude, Uber. Yeah. Airbnb. Uh huh. Hotel Tonight. Dag. <laughs> Dag. Living Social and Munchery. Nice. 
Braintree has made the payment experiences in these apps seamless and magical. There's magic involved. Yeah. And now you can add a similar experience to your own app. Are you developing an app and you need an easy payment solution? Braintree is your company. Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billion. Jesus. That's a lot of dollars. <laughs> that is optimism. Uh, Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience. So check it out for yourself. You're going to get a full-stack payment solution, support for all payment types that any of your customers might want, including, listen to this, PayPal, Apple Pay, Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin, Venmo, credit cards, and much more more it's across all platforms it works with fraud protection uh you're gonna get all kinds of support and best of all uh your first fifty thousand dollars in transactions fee free fantastic they're not gonna cut any off of that if you want to sign up and you're developing an app and need a payment solution go to braintreepayments.com slash cnet Okay, welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're here with Sphere. It's the first time if you've if you're just tuning in, <laughs> it's uh, it's the first time ever. Ste- not only is Steve and Russ met each other, yeah, right. they're gonna go ahead face and jump face. right in to a show. So I want to get like the uh, quarter, a third of the way through the show. How's it going for you guys? It's going great. You guys, this is good. It's, been a I, I, it's a good. You guys are a good match. Oh, oh thanks, Steve. Yeah, sure. This is really good. So you, this is like uh, I feel a chemistry. It's all about chemistry. I always say that in the olden days of the four hundred four, it's all about chemistry. Well, thanks, man. And either you got it or you don't. And that's been, um, th- you know, that's been echoed by a lot of our listeners. So I appreciate it. Oh, this is great. You. I'm you excited. Know. And your opinion definitely counts just well, as much. It does. I've been more, around. I would I've say. I've been doing this a while. You three, have. Three times more. Th- at least than a three listener. times more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um, take it. All right. So you, as always, have a, a, a litany of, of items to get to. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at all the items. There you go. A little foldy this, work. For and this is all handwritten. Yeah. So we call that the chicken scratch. Chicken scratch. Understood. He has a very f- uh, interesting handwriting. <laughs> I'm getting like, you know that scene in Seven where they yeah. find all the notebooks? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's the vibe that I'm that's getting. That's the vibe. Well put. You know, it's written so that most people can't read it. Right. It's only Smart. for your... Yeah. For my eyes only. Partly functioning <laughs> eye. Um, all right. So you want to talk about the, the, the other, other Earth. Other Earth. Yeah. This Kepler thing. Yeah. So this came out like a month ago or maybe three weeks ago. Clearly missed it. You didn't hear about this? No. So they're another... already out of touch. Oh, you mean the, the planet that they found yeah, that, yeah. that may be the... a livable planet. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. Kep- it's, I believe it's called Kepler 452b. Okay. You got to yeah. wonder about where those names come from. Well, Kepler, is, I believe, it's is a guy. The, the guy. Mr. No, Kepler. It's the telescope, I think. Oh, yeah, Isn't... but it was named after of course. Kepler. Sure. Mr. Kepler. Mr. Kep. Mr. Kep is what we called him back mm. in astronomy class. So The uh, Kepster. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a larger a version of our planet. It's not a version of our planet. It, yeah. it resembles our some planet. Some elements. It, it's in, there's like a sweet life spot could be on where life planet. could be supported, right. and this planet falls into that sweet spot. Although I'm looking at the description on that top line now, and I'm a little bit skeptical. Really? Why is that? Because they're describing it as the planet Tatooine. Which I would never ever want to live on because it's just like desert, <laughs> just and, hot, yeah. all the time. Well, oh, I guess what well, a lot of parts of Earth, is, Earth like is like that. Yeah, I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jeff would definitely not. Live. I would fry in a heartbeat. Uh, so, 452b. It is a larger uh, planet. It has a similar year. I believe it has a 385 day year. Okay, that's pretty okay, good. That's close enough. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to go? I I believe it's 1400 light years away. Might not even be there. <laughs> As far it might as not even know. be there anymore. We, when, we, when we see it, we see it that long ago. Right, right. So, what but do you I'm think? thinking, you know, this whole obsession with finding intelligent life. Mm-hmm. Let's say it, it's there, mm-hmm. but it's so far behind us. It's a billion years behind us. It it becomes irrelevant. What is a billion happen. years behind? Like like microbes? Are we talking that? Or are we talking dinosaurs? I'm yeah, not 100 well, sure. No, not dinosaurs. Yeah, microbes, right? Okay. Or sure. if it's a billion years or a million years ahead of sure. ahead of us, it's like. To, to find another planet with intelligence right, that's, that's close. sort of within our realm, right? Wh- how close <laughs> would it need to be? I feel like it needs to be within 50,000 years. No. Not even. 50, imagine if they came here 50,000 years ago and you're just seeing people scratching and stuff. It's, that's it's true. So, it needs, uh, so we're saying it needs to be like 
within a few hundred ancient years. Ancient Egypt pretty... probably <laughs> is like so, a, a race that we could probably get find common ground with. Oh, right. But you want in your scenario, we have to be ahead of them. And that would be nice. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> the alternative is like, we're screwed. Yeah. Right. You don't they look at us and they say, these people are bugs. So, <laughs> so this reminds me of this thing called the Fermi paradox. Have you heard about this? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm, I'm, if I've got the right one. There's one that says no matter what extraterrestrial life we find, oh, they'll yeah. never be. I don't know if this is this, the one, but there's one that says if we do find life somewhere else, the chances of them being like we just talked about. Right sort of like on the same uh, uh, like notion of cognitivity right, is okay. so impossible that right. we'll never be able to appreciate finding extraterrestrial life, mm -hmm. right? right? This Fermi paradox, and I just pulled up the wiki, says, it is the apparent contradiction between high estimates, such as in the Drake equation, <laughs> of the probability of the existence of extraterrestrial life civilizations and the lack of contact with or evidence for such civilizations. So I think this is like kind of orbiting yeah. around the same right. idea, sure. same principle. That there may be billions of other planets that have the potential to have intelligent life. Yeah. But the chances of them being in sync enough with us that would matter. That we could even understand each yeah, other. Yeah, but like, okay, let's say they are like, oh, for argument's sake, a million years ahead of us. Okay. That'd be some weird shit. That would be amazing. We'd see some weird shit. We might not understand what's going on, right. like, but they would like... But Show up right. and whatever thing they are, however they would exist, blow our absolute minds, and we wouldn't be able to understand it. Like, think about um, okay, you can't even do and it, and then they'd kill us. <laughs> I, that's the Hollywood sort right. of version of it. They like, want oh, our water. They just want <laughs> our air. Uh, a mil like let's say Earth is around. In they'd a say you have years. an iPhone six. Wow, we <laughs> well, need that. Hand that over. <laughs> like let's say Earth lives on for a million more years, right? Oh, okay. If you could time travel a million years into the future, right. like. Would you even want to see it? Would no. you even want to no, have be to? Not a downer. Would you even want to have to like process that? I don't think you that? could comprehend. Yeah, I don't, like you can't. Well, either. Earth would be. I mean, it's either here or it's not. But well, I don't. No, no, either it's either it's nuclear saying, holocaust I think ourselves, we got, an asteroid. Oh, kind of, yeah. I mean, the sun won't explode for a, a couple yeah, we billion gotta, years. Right. A little while. But Still we're safe. <laughs> it'll be safe a few times over. Right. But yeah, it, that blows my mind, man. Like what? You, we can't even. It's almost something you can't even try and hypothesize over mm -hmm. because I mean, it's just we've only had technology as we talk about technology it's like a hundred years yeah, it's, right there's a hundred not years. even a blip it's not even a blip it's not and even. the human race is two hundred thousand give years or take old, more or less right yeah so for the first hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and we had nothing. We were doing nothing. That's right. the thing about going back in time, looking at your generations. It's like, what was, you know, the back of our ancestor, your go back 10,000 years? Yeah. What were they doing? You know, yeah. scratching, yeah. you know, hitting things with rocks. Probably like Pro into a net. <laughs> into, into some fashion net. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. With right. another stick. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a trip. It's a total it's trip. Parody. So what? But so what else about that? Is it just the idea of like why are we even looking for intelligent? Well, life? maybe we will breed and you know need another place to go to, but a place that's a couple of you know light years sure. away is not. I don't think we could even. There's no way to communicate, even if we were. Well, first of all, they'd be, it would take a while. Billions of years. Well, how far away are they? Who it's that Kepler one? Fourteen hundred light years away. Yeah. Okay, so one thousand four hundred years. A go we're seeing right, right. and to so get if we there, sent them a message hey how you doing right. it would take 1400 years to get there right so but that's not kinda, that of like 1400 years it's not that like it's probably still there yeah it's it's, I, I think a safe it's bet to say there. is it's still <laughs> so there. then they get the message okay oh wow cool and then they send us the message it's like 1400 years so it's 2800 years to say hi how you doing but i don't think we would wait for a response we'd just show up like a rude house guest do, right i guess so <laughs> does it does it uh and maybe this is like something you no human should ever like worry about but like <laughs> doesn't it does it freak anyone else out that like unless einstein we prove him wrong and like we find wormholes and stuff like that sure the well, idea wormholes do exist so I think he'd probably agree with you. That can that. surpass the speed of light. Yeah, I think he's. Is that what you're I saying, Mr. Hawking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I, well, like it, there's something isolating about knowing, like, we're oh, alone. we're alone. No. Like we're not alone, but we're alone in the sense that if light is this impenetrable speed, sure, we're never gonna have a realistic way of traveling through the universe. 
where you can visit planets that are hundreds of light years away. Yeah, we're stuck with these eight and a half planets. Yeah. Drag. <laughs> right? And it took how it took four hours for information from Pluto to get sent back to here, and, and Pluto's in our solar the system. The fact that it just had a heart on it was enough for us to get excited. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, imagine we get a message from 2,500 years ago, right? Where it's like, a, you know, that sort of thing. That would be wacky. Yeah. Yeah. And they're I, like, I, I yeah, you're we, welcome. Come over. Yeah. And we're like, what? Uh, that's not really going to work for Ooh. us. But what if they're, you know, they're like hung up on the Jack Benny show from 1930 or something. Sure. Like, Man, that guy was amazing. Yeah. Oh, he's been dead. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Don't, don't hurt us. That's not our fault. <laughs> Yeah, that's <gasps> trippy, man. I'm glad we had that. What if they were like really into the Sopranos and then they see James Gal- Gandolfini die? It's like, holy shit, no more <laughs> Soprano things. <laughs> I'm glad we got to do this uh, whoa moment with you whoa. on today's show. It's important that we that we uh, meet our quota right. of that. Uh, what so else? I want to ask you a question. Yeah. This is off the cuff, so to speak. Okay. I love it. You. It's the best kind of cuff. Far. Yeah. And you, Russ. Yeah. I don't remember your last Fresh dick. Fresh dick. Very easy to remember. You yeah, got that? Rolls right off the top. Yeah. Fresh dick? Fresh. Fresh. I think fresh I just drank your water. Sorry like breakfast. About that. Yeah, it's gone now. <laughs> you can like breakfast that. in German. So, Jeff and Russ. Yeah. Yes. How do you express your creativity? Uh, you mean... Whatever it is. Like how do what we is just your let most it creative out? act? What is your most... Uh, 404, maybe. What is, uh, what is... Yeah, I think that. I think uh, playing guitar. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes I, I draw not well, uh-huh. uh, write a lot of fiction that doesn't go anywhere. Uh-huh. That's that's mostly how yeah, I do I think it. Probably writing is the, the chief form of creative uh-huh. output. It, do, where are you Was disappointed that, just, in that? No, I'm just, just checking. I mean, I know you're a, a photography artist. Yeah, and That you, seems like fun. You know, and you do your thing there. So that's is that that's your answer. That, that would be my answer. So because I think that's I like, have been looking for something else. Huh. I do want other forms of creative. I output. want to paint. Painting sounds like a blast, but it also seems like a total hassle. Like in the, for the same reason I don't cook. Like <laughs> I like messy, the idea, well, the cleaning up part. The cleaning up part. See, and like, and then you have all these paintings in the house. Yeah, and well, that's yeah. got to get like really overwhelming. Right. So you are. So what's the solve there? Oh, what a tragic Digital. story of a laziness. File. <laughs> the lazy artist. I just want the good part of it, and I don't want the annoying part. Like I who likes to same, clean up? I was the same way about learning how to play an instrument. I just wanted it to be great. Right. It's all that practicing. Yeah, it's you a drag. You can't just pick up a guitar and freaking play it. I learned I mean, that. Yeah. Some people can, but that's a, a almost like a savantness. I'll, sort I'll of give thing. you another example. The only instrument that I want to learn how to play is the harmonica because it's small and easy to carry around, <laughs> very portable <laughs> and cheap. Yes. So even if there a, are other instruments, like a great harmonica. It's probably just a, a Jews harp parts. would also a be Jews appropriate. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is truly pathetic. You two. I, I really think that being from for me evaluating my life, mm. that being creative is like the single most important thing. Uh, okay. I want to say that I could, you know, create this thing. thing. Yeah. You, no. And I you mean, find that like fulfilling. I yourself. do. Seriously. That's something. That makes serious. sense. I, I think it does. So if someone says to me, what is it all about? Why are you here? What yeah. good have you, you know, been? I would say I tried to do creative things. Well, I think the most fascinating that would be thing about life mm-hmm. is figuring out what the hell to do. Well, not yeah. only that, but it's also like the notion of self-awareness and mm-hmm. like being a conscious of yourself, being mm-hmm. that kind of being mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. Where like a dog doesn't know it's a dog. I mean, it probably knows very few basic things, but it doesn't have like self-reflection right. and existence of being and that right. sort of thing. I think the thing about animals is that they don't have a sense. They're 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 here now, right? Mm-hmm. They don't. Think they live in the now. Yeah. They don't think. Oh, two weeks from now, it's gonna be my birthday. Dog doesn't plan shit. Dog's right. like, oh, I'm busy that weekend. I can't make it to right. your wedding. They're, doesn't they're, work they're, like. Although they do bury bones. Yeah, but that's like an instinctual sort of. But they're planning to get the bone later. Yeah, but like when I go home, but they're programmed to do that. They yeah, that, they didn't exactly. think it up. Yeah, it's just you like know, a, if I played, planted you know some bones here, I right. could come back later. Like a bee, a bee's not. Oh God, my schedule's so messed up. I gotta <laughs> pollinate this entire block, and I'm just not really feeling it. It just does. Yeah, it, right. The it's same like way, a little computer. This program. right, the same way your heart beats. Like right. we're not consciously being like, okay, bee, okay, bee, okay. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. But our brains are this amazing instrument 
that, some more than others of course mm. that we are able to be creative and express ourselves right and that but, to me and, like, and taking advantage of that is a big deal but what about yeah. like the elephants that like mourn their dead <laughs> uh they sure there's there's notions of it they, there's they notions have of emotions it. yeah they can have and emotions. and there are some dogs that apparently realize when their owner dies and they feel like sad sure and, but that's just like basic meanwhile cats basic. eat the owner's face yeah, cats, cats <laughs> in about just, a half hour <laughs> yeah they're the worst <laughs> Cats. You have cats. I don't like cats. Uh, but I don't you like have animals. cats. I've had cats. Yeah. And they would eat I your threw face. a cat out of... Did I ever talk about the time I threw a cat out a window? See? Learn something new <laughs> every... Why'd you throw... I mean... Did you know the bless cat? Bless you, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Bless it you was for my, doing... Was it in it was, a car? It was my... No, it was my apartment. Okay. But it was, it was not like down, you know... It was... What it floor was, like, was it? No, it was like, the ground floor. ground floor. It was no, it was like the third floor. But it third was, floor. It was, third floor. That <laughs> could be cat. No, 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 no. That's no, fine. No, cats no, no. can fall eight stories and be cool. I, well, cool. I got to go. What I'm going to go about cats? No, it was like outside the window, but then there was like a landing. There. Okay. Oh, so fire escape did, or something? No, it was like my patio. And uh, sure. So why is the story so cool? I just cool? was so pissed off at this uh, cat. I opened the window and I threw it out and I said basically like get the hell out of here. Right. Yeah. And the cat left and then my. First wife, it landed on the like patio. Weird, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, it, it, like a foot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Understood. And then you know it, but it basically was like screw you. And then it went away. And then my wife said, "Where's the cat?" I said, well, "I threw the cat out the window." <laughs> she knew what I meant. And she said, "Well, where is it?" I said, "I don't know." And then it didn't come back for a few days. Gone. Okay. But then, unfortunately, it came back. back. Like that. But you know the thing. I'm about, not endorsing cat murder for the for the okay. record. Okay. By the way, there was a thing on that on that NPR show. Uh, Radio Lab about cats falling out of windows. Yeah. Yeah. Is the thing is, is that a cat reaches its maximum right. speed. Velocity. Velocity. I think like when it's going, when it's gone down like eight floors. Yeah. So when it goes like 16 foot, it's not going any it doesn't faster. Make any right. Like the, the, right. So there's like a certain like slows a down. Yeah. Style there's body. a certain, but that, that still means like, but once it hits maximum velocity, it's. No, it's I don't no. think so. No, no, you think really. so? It can fall out a of cat can fall out, of, out of like a ten story thing, and, or like and a plane. Yeah, we could drop a cat. No, out of a plane. it would It <laughs> probably freeze it. up or something. You're telling in a suit. Yeah, in like a thermal suit. <laughs> You're thermal. telling me you can a, a cat. Can no, no. Survive? Here was the thing. I'll, I'll find it. I'll send you the link because it was so great. It was like because in New York City, every year cats fall out of windows. Yeah, sure. Very common. Accidentally, right? Gravity. And they said that <laughs> between this and that, this and this level, the cat lives. And above that level, sometimes they all, it was like this whole thing. Yeah, there's like a. It's I'm, not. It's not the higher it falls, the le- more likely it is it's going to die. So w- that's weird. I need to see this cat death infographic. Mm-hmm. I will find it for you. All right. Cats are the worst. Yeah, we all agree. We, you know, I'm. I love all animals, and I don't want cats I, to I die. For them. the record, even though it's like funny to joke about, right. I do well, I believe really, they yeah. should. I'm not a vegetarian. Die. I don't nice. want any animal to die. But of course, but yeah, I I hate them. There, you cats. know, yeah, they just so these cat. Oh, I remember by the way, this cat. Yeah, I used to sleep on the floor on a mattress, mm-hmm. and it was a there was a radiator like at the foot of where the mattress was, and this okay. cat would sit there. Yeah, and then stay it would warm. Jump onto my junk, junk. Yeah, sure. That's not so cool. I was always like. Is it there? Is it going to jump? And we <laughs> had this tense. kind of weird relationship. Really relax that, that that it was scenario. always like plotting. Well, yeah, it's this against junk me. prancing cat. So that kind of explains why I threw it up. All right, fair enough. And I was happy when it didn't come back, but then it did come back. Mm-hmm. And you're like, Larry, what'd you come back for? What was its name? I don't remember. I'm going to call it Larry. Yeah. All right. More. I had one cat I did like, and it was called Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. Can't make this up, Russ. No, you can't. This is this is what we get into. All right, we'll take one more break. More 404 coming right at you after this. Today's show is also sponsored by SoftLayer. Yeah, you know, Jeff, I always feel like there's all these cloud services out there. None of them you can really personalize and make it good for your company. You mean you want your own cloud? I want my own cloud to live in. <laughs> Do you want Can to- I personalize that? All right. I don't know if SoftLayer is going to give you an actual cloud to, you know, sort of be uh, involved in in that sure. capacity, but it is going to give you your own sort of cloud, your customized cloud yeah. for your computing and business needs. Your business applications, your workloads, they're different, right, from everyone else's. Everyone's got different uh, demands and, and, and sort of uh, requirements, if you will. Well, SoftLayer is going to customize your cloud needs to suit you. 
Software is one of the only cloud providers that provisions bare metal servers and virtual servers from a single seamless platform. All of this on demand. All of them are connected to the same open API and all are connected to a global private network. Best of all, Softlayer is an IBM company, so they know this cloud infrastructure and they have that IBM cloud foundation supporting it. All right. Visit softlayer.com slash podcast to get started with your $500 off of server storage network and security on a cloud that's built and customized for you from Softlayer. Again, head over to softlayer.com slash podcast if you want to get started on building a customized cloud solution for you. Welcome back to the 404 show. Steve, we've covered a lot today. I'm exhausted. We're gonna we're gonna maybe wax poetic about the feelings you have for the twentieth the twentieth century. century. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? I mean it's a big like, chunk of your life. Not I mean, yeah, really, it's just like the eighties and nineties, essentially. That's all we experienced in the twentieth century. Right? I know, that's a lot. It's a it's a it's a chunk. But I don't feel like any nostalgia for the whole century. I really well, just for the those part decades. That you were around for. So right. like individual moments in those decades, sure, or those decades as a whole. I have. Did my you think you were about. happier then? I think the younger you are, you're just automatically happier. I, yeah, I don't know about that. Why? The younger you are, you just don't understand uh, uh, how, turmoil how much it and sucks. misery. I yeah. don't know. I was. There were definitely parts in my youth that I was just not happy for dumb reasons. Oh, let's get dark. No, like yeah. whatever. Like I hated. School, oh, like and angsty, angsty stuff. Okay. You were angsty, an angsty yeah. kid. Who every child totally. from our generation was angsty. Look at the music. It yeah. was Nirvana, right? I uh-huh. mean, it was just pissed off for no real good right. reason. No reason. You know, I'm not saying that. Uh, you know, spelt it out for every hey, teenager. But you guys didn't have to hide under the desk during the nuclear. Uh, I mean, you didn't either. That was fired. your choice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was ordered to. So, so let me. So, all right, but that I guess that is 20th the fear century of uh, nostalgia, nuclear lo- annihilation. But you guys annihilation. would definitely. And I would say, but but I understand. So, if there is a bomb, won't we die anyway? Yes. Yeah. And it was hiding all, under the desk. It's like the TSA. It's, they call it security theater. <laughs> Right. Yeah, totally. I wish I would have said that to my third grade teacher. Sure, she would. Hey, been. this is just security theater. <laughs> That's it. So I come from the future. So what? So what, I mean, like, what kind of things are you holding on to? Like, what, what's the point of talking about this? Uh, I think like film. Oh, all right. As in film, the actual like film. actual physical. It's film. funny how people still say they tape things, yeah. even though they don't tape. I things. say for in, t- instead of DVR, I'm like, oh, I, re- I, I tape that. Hang up right. the phone. Hang up the Hang phone. Up the phone. Right. No, dial the yeah. phone. Well, mm-hmm. dial is still say, a thing. You don't say of. dial the phone. But right. dial was a circular right. dial. Right. Oh no, I, you could do tile dialing with a pulse phone. Yeah, pulse yeah, tone. You could, you could. But the but term it was a, it was a hangover because a dial is a circular thing. Right. Right. Have you ever done it? Yeah, Have of I, course. Oh, yeah, rotary, rotary phone? phone? Rotary yeah, phone. when I go to like Katie Stanton's house, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let me try this phone out. <laughs> yeah, when I go to a museum and I have to make a call, that's what I use a rotary phone. Because, you know, it's a thing I didn't realize as a small child that when you dial the phone, right, you had to go all the way around. Of yeah, course. You didn't just zero. go like that. Yeah, you it had to touch the, the metal hole. rotation. Right. Yeah, you doing this like people can see. You had to make a whole rotation of the dial to and actually I heard get that, the number. Right, and I heard that people would not be friends with people with like nines in their number right, because it took extra. so long oh, yeah. to I mean, dial a nine. That's yeah. like a 285 degree right. thing. Yeah, it's a big yeah. difference. And they yeah. weren't even like area codes. No, it was just like I don't three. think area codes. It was no. like rabbit yeah, and yeah. It was like seven the, James five <laughs> right. was your number. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, stuff like that. Do you no, remember we're, that? Was, I remember we're, before they were area. Codes, so what, yeah. what, what? How did that work? I you mean, just, I remember you before. just dialed the seven digits. There were no three but in you front of the seven. But you don't remember a pre-seven digit phone world, where like there was an. Well, operator. There aren't seven eight, where there's ten. Now. Wait, 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 wait. There's wait. ten digits in a phone. Wait, let me let me clarify this because so you remember before there were area codes. So, but your number, like if you dialed. The same number in California, you would get a different number, correct? <laughs> I would think so. But there were still like that. Essentially, there were duplicate numbers. Yeah, how did the I phone so. know? Because yeah, there weren't nine hundred ninety. There were more than nine hundred ninety nine thousand. But phones. I'll tell you the weird thing, Russ, is that it, back in my it, when I was a child, sure, people though they could have called California and New York, they didn't. It would take an right. extraordinary circumstance to sure. make. Well, because the cost call. of it, it cost sure. a lot, but it wasn't like it cost. A thousand dollars. Yeah, it costs 
five dollars, and they'd say, oh, "I'm not going to spend five dollars." Yeah, five dollars back then was a thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's weird, you know, that people just didn't make those calls. Yeah. So I, I guess what I would you have to talk? Oh, to I don't know. What you would about. do is you would call the operator. Right. Connect you'd me. Call to the a, operator. Yeah. I need this thing in you know Chatsworth, California. And that, where was this operator? Would yeah. was there he like would a, dial zero. Right, but was it was there like a local operator like? Base or is it like it goes to DC? No, you called the local operator. Okay, okay. so there's like a room with a it's ton the of New York City people. or the switchboard, 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 and well, just a ton of people plugging things. No, in no, they weren't. Things. They weren't plugging in. Really? No, that's before my time. That, <laughs> okay. it, so that's like but what, you actually 40s? did call the fifties. No, 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 switchboard. The plugging. The switchboard you with the thing. The what year was that? That's probably the forties and before. Okay. Yeah, but when I was a kid and you wanted to call a, a long distance call, you would call the operator. Uh huh. And you'd say, "I'm Connect calling, me too. you know, L- Los Angeles." Could you get a specific operator? Like, if there's a, like Shirley? a way, like Shirley. if you wanted Shirley and you only trusted Shirley, I to didn't. This call. I I didn't think about that when I was a kid. I should an have. extension for Shirley. Huh. Yeah, that's interesting. They must got, must have gotten so many creeper calls oh, and people God. just wanted to like have a friend. Yeah. Hey, Shirley. <laughs> so I'm going to give you that number, but just one sec. Yeah. What are you How's wearing? your day going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's creepy. We, we can't have any of that. So there was there was that. But you know there was so there was CRT TVs. You know everybody used to say when will we ever have a flat TV? It was really? always people this thing that was off in the future. Yeah. Like we had big you remember CRT TVs. I right? was Dude, yeah, that so, was that was 10 years ago. Yeah, I understand. Saying, I was, I was oh, just in South ago. Dakota last week. Uh-oh. Lots of CRT. Which is basically time travel. Basically time traveling and there is legit like a giant CRT TV and it was plugged into a DVD player <laughs> but through RCA cables. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. So and only it didn't do stereo. It was only mono through wow. the DVD player. So that was the extent of like modernization going that, on. So, you, wow. w- I, that is such a cringe worthy like <laughs> picture I'm, I'm envisioning in my head. Like, what is the worst possible connected technology oh. j- like junk that you can think of where it's like, oh, this guy's got a record player hooked up? Hey, hey, no, no, watch no, it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not speaking ill of the record player. It was the manner in which the record player is connected. Uh, okay. But I'm like, still blown away that like, the best stereo connection is still this the with banana, the clamps. The banana plugs? Yeah, that just seems so lo-fi to me. Is uh, that crazy? Huh? No. What? So he's saying like, <laughs> like the black what... and the red. Oh, yeah. He thinks like the, the, to the, the, wire. the positive and the negative it on the wire. It just seems like oh, weirdly, for speaker wires? Yeah, for speaker wires. It seems but like you very can, lo-fi. But you can wrap that into something that plugs in nice. Yeah, Like a, It's called a banana plug. You can get a banana plug. Yeah. And what does that do? That just, it's like it just, uh, just male and female. It just yeah. plug it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a way to get around that now. Yeah, It's been like that for a while. We've had those for a while. Okay. Yeah, it's not just like, you're not just like splicing wire and like, you know. It makes me find it kind of smart. I feel like smart when I do that. Like I know what I'm doing because that <laughs> yeah, can you're match a te- the you're techie. You feel you're technical. technical. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what other things do you have this nostalgia uh, for? Well, but film, you know. Yeah. Film as an analog thing that you could look at. Yeah, right? I never really, so... I guess I never did that. Like, I... There was never a moment where I could like interact. I guess you get negatives from the. From the sure, photography store. that's not long ago. That's but like, not... I never like had like a film strip, and mm. I was like splicing it, which seems no. like a very cathartic. But I did that you were in film school, school right? Yeah. And yeah. you shot film. I film? shot on bo- on a Bolex, uh-huh. uh, and I shot on an Ari. I forget what the name of it is, but I did sixteen millimeter and thirty five millimeter mm. film. And do they still teach kids to use those? So, like my I senior it. year, it's be so expensive. It's very yeah. expensive. Yeah. My senior year of college mm-hmm. was like the transition year, where they're like, "We're not doing how to cut film on a Steenbeck anymore." Mm-hmm. Right, and I'm like, "God damn it!" I you, learned, you were there. You I was happy there for that, that transition, which is it. an interesting thing to yeah, be a yeah, part yeah. of. And I learned digital video there as well. And we, uh-huh. I learned how to cut on Avid and Final Cut uh-huh. there too. Because uh-huh. what they did was they would take your analog film and digitize it. Sure. So mm-hmm. you would shoot all this film. Okay. We would go to like do art, uh-huh. have oh, it wow. color corrected, wow. sit in on that uh, session. Nice. And then they would do art or for another third party would digitize that film, which we then cut on an MLE like That's Final how did, Cut. How did they color correct on actual film? That's a great question. You know? That's called color timing. Yeah. Okay. How did they And they do were that? just doing, you know, basically CRT. That's what color correction. Yeah, but be. how did the final version... I guess what they would do is they had a maybe... So they didn't... They obviously didn't color correct the source film. Sure. It was like then 
recreate in processing it. they would yeah, add they would like recreate okay, that right, sure. and that chemical process yeah. was part of the, the the development so there was this thing called a uh, i had it and now i can't remember what it's called but i knew this guy who worked at a lab and and you know the the way that film was transferred to video for a long time was that you'd have a projector a film projector and the lens was shooting into a tv camera yeah right that's mm-hmm. called telecine mm-hmm. right right and it's a it's a cr- very weird crude system, but that's all there was. But think about it. How well else? into the seventies and possibly into the eighties. That's yeah. the only way to get film to. I mean, and that's definitely how they did film to like VHS and stuff like that. Like if you had an oh, yeah, yeah. if you had an old sixteen millimeter oh, home for, movie. I don't mean home movie. I mean like on networks. But I'm just stuff. saying that's like how if, they did it. But I worked it. at Channel Eleven yeah. and, and ABC TV, and I did Telecine there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's literally a. A, a, a projector into the lens and then there'd be a monitor on top of the TV camera right. and you'd see what you were doing. Right. Um, but then there was this system that came out in the 80s where it wasn't optical. It was an electron beam reading the film frame mm-hmm. and then basically that's how the transfer was It done. was like an instant... Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And what was amazing was that when you saw that image, it no longer looked like film it didn't really look like video. It looked like this thing in between. Interesting. It no longer looked like film. And it was weird. Because then, you know, it used to be I could watch TV and say, that's film. Sure. That's video. And then it got to this thing happening where it's like, I'm not sure now. It could, that line that gets erased somehow. Yeah, that line got erased. And that was really strange. But the thing I think that's interesting about you being in film school is that when you shoot on film, it, it automatically imposes a discipline. Like every foot of film that you're showing right. is, it, you know, there's a there's, there's a it costs a weight money. To it. It's very right. important. That you, you have get to it right. think before you start to do it. And yeah. now it's just like it doesn't matter. It's all essentially free to shoot. Mm-hmm. And it's like this 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 Brooklyn um, record company called Daptone Records. Yeah, I they that. they they record on analog tape. Mm-hmm. And I interviewed the guy that owns the the label, and he said one of the things he, reasons he does this is because he wants the musicians mm-hmm. to play for real yeah. not like well we'll fix this we'll punch this in we'll do this thing sure so he has an eight track recorder and the regular bands that record with him they know what he's doing but if someone comes in to do a part he told me this is the way the conversation goes like the guitar player comes in he plays his bit and then they'll say to the guy you think you can do it better yeah. he says yeah I'll, I'll do another one he says but when you do it again i'm going to record over what you just did yeah he said you can't save that no, no. there's no saving yeah so play it for real. That's, that's and intense. It's, every time we do it, we're going to record over the previous tape. So play it as good as you like can. Like you mean it. Like you mean it. Yeah. That's great. And it changes the way people play. Now, sure. you could do the same thing. You could just tell people. Right. Musicians aren't the brightest people. You could just <laughs> do the same thing in digital. But, but I'm just saying, it's so interesting that it's beyond the technology of film or analog mm-hmm. recording that it imposes this, this, this process right. that makes people play in a different and some ways better way for me i i mean i get that and it's really just like a style right like you're not for me it's like let's i want to do this just as good each time i mean like when you it's, it's a performance for, that's the difference yeah, whereas before it's it's but, an but assembling bits and pieces of mm-hmm. performance right, but think about it like a movie right like we'll do four takes of this scene and well, your best take films is what we'll are do. always edited right so yeah. it's it's M- a different music's thing music's usually edited no see in the old days they actually would play the whole freaking <laughs> I, song I, I and there was no edit i understand but they i'm sure they would do some stuff you want to get the best no. performance out of someone. No, yeah. it, it, when you go back far enough, there was no edits. Okay. Right? Yeah. When they were before there was tape, meaning the fifties, it was the whole song mm-hmm. or the whole uh, movement of a classical right. piece. There was, and there were no edits. Yeah. There couldn't be. So you had to play for real. Uh huh. That's now pretty they cool. accepted a certain amount of mistakes and stuff were part of it, but you played it for real. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna play something for real right now. Okay. I'm. I was gonna skip this, but we. It just plays too perfectly into this okay. discussion about nostalgia and uh, and and re- recording audio recording, and this is perfect because you were a film projectionist, and I'm gonna play a, an original recording that somebody took in 1977 during a Star Wars screening. 
And this person just recorded the theater audio. So you're going to hear people... The people reacting. Reacting to what they're seeing in Star Wars. Sure. Now, th- don't forget, this is the first Star Wars. This is a new hope. Right. No one does, has any do, idea Do we know Wars. where in the process this was recorded? Like, it was the opening night, or was it uh, like... I don't believe I have that information. Because I feel like three months in, it was probably a oh, kind yeah, of a yeah. big deal. Yeah. I think this is just like, you know, maybe... I have no idea. Let's say it's a month into okay, the release, sure. and people are seeing it. And this is just a recording from 1977, okay. and... Uh, we're just going to listen. This is the scene towards the end when they're about to blow up the Death Star. And I believe we're going to pick it up right when Han Solo comes in and helps Luke make his way to that part of the Death Star where he can blow it up. Okay. So let's listen to this and uh, Roll the you tape. get to hear the audience reaction, which is really, really cool stuff. <laughs> Oops, I went too far. Here we go. So they're like applauding Han Solo. He just showed up. So now they're... Death Star, ex- Death Star explodes and everyone yeah. in, the, in the audience is losing it. They're like super psyched. It's crazy. It's kind of funny how abruptly that first Star Wars film ends. Because mm. it's basically... Well, after- there's, and then they get the medal. That thing is super quick. And then like Darth Vader's just spiraling into space after the Death Star explodes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, and, that's, and that's really it. And then I just want you to hear the credits. Nineteen seventy seven. Gerald Ford. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Gas yes, crisis. Yeah. Oh, controversy. Yeah, and people are just like, oh, that was a fun movie I'd never seen or thought of before. Right? Yeah, so what do you I think had, of something like that. I had that? this friend who was a, who worked in screening rooms and he was screening Star Wars, so you know, a month or so before the release. Yeah. And he was saying to me, What well, is this movie coming out Star Wars? And he said, Everybody thinks it's gonna be a bomb. Because at that point, there were no big, you know... Sci-fi. Sci-fi, successful sci-fi. Sure. There were always sci-fi movies, but none of them were gigantic. Unless you're talking about Planet of the Apes. Uh, when is that? Well, that was like 60s, but... Yeah. Okay, but I don't think it was mega. Okay. Yeah, this was on a right. different level, right. for sure. sure. And But they th- this one had, like, no chance, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. They were convinced. So he said, Steve, you better rush out and see this when it comes it's gonna out. It's going gonna, gonna to be gone in a couple weeks. Yeah. There's no chance, you know. Yeah, so it's it's kinda, amazing. Well, there you go. Tying but up. I think I think the way audiences react mm-hmm. to movies, it's like when you see old TV shows and you hear the the, the studio yeah. reaction. It's like it's different. If you go back far enough, it's different. Like now on Jimmy Fallon, they go woo woo woo. Yeah. People didn't do that kind of no. Thing then. Diff- you're talking about a different audience reaction. Yeah, over over the decade. Yeah, look at you like, think like it's like a random popping you out. Think it's a, like that. You think <laughs> it's kind of a random group of people who are in an audience, but the way they react and stuff is changed. entirely different. It I mean, was all up. Arsenio. He changed the game. Yeah, yeah, that's you're right. The Arsenio Hall show with the woo woo with the woo woo. And uh, yeah, you look at like the laugh track on uh, Happy Days. Uh-huh. That's like a very and even the subject material of Happy Days makes it feel even older than yeah. it really is. Yeah, yeah, well, that was kind of nostalgic in its own time. Of course, of course. Well, this was a great way to wrap up your 20th century nostalgia. Oh, man. And I a feel... nice little kit. All right? Thanks I for like being that here, century. man. That was... You know, a lot of bad things happen. A lot of, most, most terrible Amazing. things happen. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I always say to people, you think this is a scary time that we live in right now? Yeah. This is a very tame period. Yeah, I guess you could No see. world wars. Right. No. No mass depression. No assassinations on a regular basis. I mean, a lot of it is just we know about so much more that's going on. There was probably like a lot of awful stuff. You, has anything in the 21st century equaled World War One or Two? No. 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 <laughs> Do you know how many people died in World War Two? A lot. Like yeah. Tens million. of millions yeah. of people. More yeah. in World War One. There's yeah. nothing Nothing like that's happened. Right. There's nothing. been genocide, but there it's have. not... 
Have there been the any scale. major political assassinations in the United States? In the in no. the U.S. The no. US. They no. kind of no. tamped that down. Right. Now, but riots in the streets. You know, in the yes, 60s. No, that's happening. Regular. No, not no. like that. That's, Ferg that's one scary. at a time. When when Martin Luther King was assassinated, there were riots in many cities yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. And that was without Twitter. And that was without Twitter. And they Twitter. didn't even know. I think everything just feels smaller now, and maybe that's this no, like, I think claustrophobic. No, when you're in it, you don't know how it's going to end. So it yeah. seems scarier because you're projecting, mm -hmm. this is happening now, it will... Well, and that we know, like, uh, when would you hear about an explosion in China in the 60s? Like, it would take you months. Take a week you later. Would, no, they had radio. They had I know, but, like, like would, you had, would you have necessarily heard about that? Yes. You right think it when would it happened. It would have made well, huge news? Minutes later, but you'd hear it on the evening news. Okay. Yes, yeah, I, uh, that makes sense. They had no. satellites. I get it. No, no, no. sure. I know. Yeah. They could yeah, they it's, had telephone lines. <laughs> yeah, I love how you're trying to like validate your uh, your generation. <laughs> we believe you. Whatever you say, space man. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here, man. This, this is fantastic. fantastic. This is a great great show today. Uh, make sure you follow Steve on Twitter. At, and this is the beginning of a great adventure. I think so. It is. Jeff and Russ yeah, era. The new era. era. The new era. Uh, <laughs> follow Steve on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man and read all of his musings on CNET.com. Slash, slash audiophiliac. audiophiliac. Uh, all right, Steve. We'll see you next time. Fantastic. Russ, always a pleasure, Jeff, sir. a pleasure. We're back here next week with a brand new show. Hit us up, the 404 at CNET.com. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and then hop over to the subreddit. We we actually did have a lot of subreddit questions for you, but you got to huh. go, right? I got to go. You got to go. Next all right. time. Next time. We'll, uh, we'll keep I'll you in the hopper. Sooner. Thanks for participating on the subreddit. And we'll see you guys next time. Until then, I'm Jeff Backer. I'm Ross Frustick. I'm Steve Guttenberg. This has been the 404 Show, high-tech, low-brow. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.